E, the extraterrestrial. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Poltergeist. Tootsie. Conan the Barbarian. And Pink Floyd the Wall debuted in it. All right, in the Billboard Top 10 that year, we had Physical by Olivia Newton-John. I think they were going to cover that that year. Uh, Survivor, Eye of the Tiger. Uh, John Cougar, not John Cougar Mellencamp, John Cougar with Jack and Diane and Hurt So Good. Steve Miller Band, Abracadabra, Soft Self, Tainted Love, and Vangelis with Chariots of Fire. All right, so in Grateful Dead world, um, 82 was, you know, a pretty smooth year in a lot of ways. Um, they did about 65 shows. They played some Warfield shows. Uh, some, the first, uh, the Greek Theater again. Um, Springfield Creamery up in, in Oregon. Um, they played some new songs in 1982. Touch of Grey for the first time. Brother Esau. Um, throwing Stones. The Grateful Dead get political. Uh, keep your day job. And West Valley Fade Away. Um, so, Phil is going to talk a little bit about some personal stuff that was going on in 1982 with him, as well as some sort of shifts that were happening with the band and Garcia, and kind of what was leading up to the next couple of years uh, with Jerry and the band. Yeah, well, when, we came, when 1982 started, it, it, it was a pretty dark time for me, personally. Uh, um, I, I had been drinking pretty heavily since the band uh, took a break in 1974, and when the band started up again, I didn't see any reason to stop. Uh, and uh, so I was, uh, I was just like floating down that river, and, and, and over New Year's '81, '82, it just, it, it just felt to me like I had, I really hit bottom. I was, I was on the wrong side of the bridge when they closed it, so I had to stay. And it was, it was actually New Year's Eve night that it, that it was closed. Okay. And they had to stay closed until January. Okay. Wow. And, okay. Uh, I was I was too out of it to get out of town on New Year's morning, and so there I was stuck in in the, in the, the Marriott Motel <laughs> on, on New Year's Day for the next three days because I could there was no way I could get across to Fairfax where I was living, or I'm sorry, San Rafael. And uh, that was uh, it, uh, like I say, it was a pretty dark time for me. But I really felt uh, when I finally got home. <laughs> and, and you know, took a shower and looked at myself. Uh, I, 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 I kind of said to myself, "Hey, man, you have hit bottom, man. You can't, you can't go down much further than this. You know, you got it. You, you got something's got to happen." And you know, and, and, as, and as human beings are, you know, I, I said that to myself, and then I promptly forgot about it. <laughs> went on about my life, but. Yeah, it it does seem in hindsight that that at that, that moment it was that was the moment when I, it's like when the sun starts to come back after the winter solstice, the, the light begins to grow and you don't see it at first. It's very imperceptible, and uh, but then as you as time goes by, you notice hey, you know, things are lightening up a little bit, and uh, no, no, nothing discord or. Uh, it epitomizes that more than uh, the, the the night of this show, where that this is where uh, Jill and I had our first date, and, uh, and uh, we and since then we've been we've been you know joined at the hip, velcroed together for 34 years, and uh, uh, that's 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 why for me 1982 is the best year of my life. So at the same time, though, with Garcia. So uh, uh, yeah, with with Garcia, Garcia, uh, Garcia's uh, his uh, usage was starting to increase, and he's starting to detach himself from us. Um, in 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 kind of weird ways, he he moved into the the basement of Rock's apartment in uh, up on the, the hill in San Rafael. And, and uh, he stopped coming to the office or to band meetings or anything, so we have all our band meetings at Rock's, in Rock's basement. They're actually up and upstairs, because Jerry didn't want us to come downstairs. <laughs> and uh, so, and it was, and it was just get, it, the music was still was still good, and it, it hadn't it, whatever it was hadn't really eaten into the music yet. 
because I mean, I, I listened back to the, some of the, the, the songs from this show we're going to play tonight, and it's stunning what Jerry has planned. It's, oh, makes me miss him all the more, you know. And um, and uh, so the the music was okay, but it was all this kind of back of your neck kind of stuff. It's a little creepy. Something's, something's off here, you know. And it just got, it just got, it just got to be more. Derek became more and more distant. And still, at least during 1982, the music had, what didn't suffer. It seemed at all. But uh, that, that, that was the beginning of that, of, of that period, which led, which ended in uh, near Jerry's coma in '86. Uh, and so in '82, also um, Garcia you know, hated confrontation with the band and he wasn't coming into the office and so in his passive aggressive way, he sort of disappeared and went off and did a lot of acoustic shows with just him and John Conn in 82. I think there was, you know, 15 or 20 of them around because it was sort of his way of getting away from the Grateful Dead. And, and still play music. Yeah. And, and still do what he loved to do. Yeah. Um, so, talk about the Frost Amphitheater and the Greek Theater a little yeah. bit. So the Greek, in 81, 81 was the first of the Greek shows and 82 was the first of the Frost. And, Talk about how those rituals, you know, affected the band and what you guys felt about those venues and sort of this home turf kind of thing. It's funny because uh, uh, Berkeley is my hometown, and I grew up. I grew up there with the university, and I, I saw I saw performances at the Greek Theater, and I'd always I always fantasized, you know, playing at the, doing something at the Greek Theater, uh, whether it was uh, having one of my compositions performed or what, whatever. Act in a Greek drama or something, <laughs> but uh, and, uh, and so I was I was really delighted when we when we got to go and play there. And, and, uh, we we had been trying for years, if I'm not mistaken, and the, the university was kept, you know. But so finally, <laughs> finally the fools <laughs> they gave in, and uh, and. and how, how long did we? How long did I we? I think it was till '89. Is that correct? Yeah. 80, '81 to '89 at the Greek, and about the same. For, uh, about the same at the Frost, also. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, there were 13 shows at the Frost yeah. through '89. Yeah. And and for uh, for us, it was it was kind of it was kind of like a return of it was almost like a return of playing in the Panhandle or out, outside kind of casually uh, back in the day uh, because it, it open air. You know, and the, uh, most, uh, a lot of the shows are during the day, or a large portion, some portion of them was during the day. You can see the audience and, and interact with the audience, and, and you're out there under the sky. And with, yeah. It's, it's really, it's, it, my personal favorite is to play outside, yeah. where there's no walls, and the end of the sky. <laughs> but that's all, only a little bit ahead of right here. Get ready for the park opening up outside under the sky. Yeah. So, uh, 82, uh, the uh, end of the summer was the big show at the Springfield Creamery. It was sort of the 10 year anniversary of the Sunshine Daydream with, for the Keezys. But the other big 82 thing um, was the Us Festival. And um, uh, the Us Festival didn't. Steve, Steve Wozniak wanted to introduce you guys, right? Some, some yeah, well, well the, they, they put us on. It was, actually, it was, it was, we, in Jamaica, we went on earlier than that. It was like seven or eight in the morning. But that was just bad scheduling seven, because seven, they seven, were so seven, far seven. behind schedule. Yeah, yeah. But I think at the US Festival, they, they are always plan to have us play at 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> And what did you say? How did I said, uh, Steve Wozniak wanted to introduce us. I'm not sure whether I knew that at the time, but uh, anyway, I, did, I, I mean, there was the opportunity was too too good to to pass up. So uh, so I just went up and, <laughs> and I said, uh, "Roar and spread! It's time for breakfast in bed with the Grateful Dead." <laughs> And now, it's 1982. So, a couple, <laughs> couple of things here. Um, 1982, the US Festival was our good friend Brian Deadhead Landmark, which is first Grateful Dead concert. Get up here. Get up here. Uh, Phil has a little gift for Brian. We have a copy of Phil and his friends live at the Warfield DVD. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. 
show for me too. Right? Anyway. We love you, Brian. Thank you so much for being a part of the Terrapin family. And, uh, one last thing. Uh, next Monday night here in the restaurant is the Dead Face 50 book release party with, with Stu and Mike. Come on out and help them celebrate and check out the book. It's very cool. Stu and Mike will both be there, so come out and show some support for his project. All right. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Welcome back to Terrapin. We'll be back. We'll be back with some